Perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Brendan Callahan, and I, this is my webinar for today. Um, so for this um, specific webinar, I'm going to go into a little bit of my practice as an oil painter and explain to you the oil painter's lifestyle and how an oil painter should, or um, one of the things that an oil painter should um, acknowledge when they are uh, starting off or when they're uh, currently working on their own practice. So um, I'm going to go a little bit of about a uh, little bit about me and um, talk to you a little bit about uh, a brief history here about me. So I started oil painting when I was 12. Now I I used to draw a lot when I was a kid and um, I went to a trade show and discovered oil painting for the first time and I really fell in love with the texture and really fell in love with the technique and the many different um, things that come along with oil painting. There's more to just uh, brush strokes. Um, I've been painting for 11 years now and I've experimented with a lot of different types of um, matter, uh, subject matter and a lot of different types of uh, styles. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more. So when you have your, um, when you want to do oil painting, you know, where do I start? So here's something I learned. Um, so at the start, um, I usually found a photo. So create your own artwork. So by doing this, you kind of, when you find a photo that really inspires you, then it helps you, allow, allows you to um, find inspiration from yourself. And it allows you to um, just create something for the sake of creating. Find a photo that is really, uh, um, find, find a photo that um, you, you are, inspired by or that um, allows you to um, get excited about it, about the, the potential to create. Um, so um, that's what I like to do. Um, have something physical so that you can reference off of. And um, some people like to work with their imagination. That's great, but imagination sometimes um, will dissipate over time and the physical copy of the photo will allow you to um, uh, reference back to. Um, doing um, other work for other people, this is really important too. And just giving free gifts or just sh simply give, showing off your work at Christmas, uh, for Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or holiday gifts is a great way to show off um, your artwork. And, and to um, uh, do work for other people. And um, so uh, doing commissions as well. Um, commissions are really good too. And obviously you get money for it and that's great too. Um, but it allows you to get out of the inner circle of family and allows you to do commissions for other people and doing other commissions for someone else will allow you to get a more broader perspective of um, the clients that you want to bring in. So you're wanting to do this, you kind of have an understanding of who you want to paint for and who you want to create artwork for. How do you start creating? So here are some materials that I like to work with that have really helped me get the results that I have been um, looking for or been working for. And um, so I'm going to dive right in. Um, oil paints, obviously, but I like to work with Windsor and Newton. Um, this is a brand that I've been working with since I was 12, and I've never really experiment, experimented with anything else. Um, it's really nice paint, and now they're expanding their um, oil paints to make a lot more vibrant and unique colors. And they're really expanding as a, as a company. Um, some brush, uh, sorry, paint brushes is um, obviously a big factor as well. Um, if you look on the right here, I have a photo of um, a different types of uh, paint brushes and, di and um, what they're called. And um, there are different types of obviously um, paint brushes, but also different types of hairs on them. So there's the bristle and there's the synthetic. And with the 
you can get different results with different types. So if you want more abstracty paintings, go with a more thick and hard bristle. But if you want more smooth and more blended paintings like me, then go with a synthetic brush. Canvases can be definitely bought in store. Um, now, if you want to go to Michael's and you're, you're starting off, I don't, that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're wanting to kind of, you're already in the painting business and you're just creating and creating, I recommend going to more other brands that um, make better canvases. And then you can really show off the quality of your work um, through that canvas. Palette paper is a big one. Palette paper allows you to mix onto paper, but it also allows you to save your paint. And this is very important because oil paint actually um, saves, um, it doesn't dry out like acrylic. You can actually save it and you can mix and reuse the paint over and over and over again. A palette knife is important for mixing these things together. You can obviously paint with a, or mix it with a brush, but I prefer using a palette knife because it allows me to um, clean my brush, uh, clean, um, not use a paintbrush and you can easily mix. It's really easy to mix with a palette knife. Now, depending where you're, um, depending where you're positioned and where, where you're painting depends on the easel. Now, there are different types. There's a stand up and there's a table, a uh, table easel. If you're in a tight spot, I recommend probably a table easel. If you, if you have a lot of room, maybe you work with a, um, a stand-up. It all depends on where you are. There are some like mine that um, are a portable one and you can bring it wherever and it has different adjustments where you can make it a table or you can make it a, um, a long easel. So it just depends on your budget as well. Um, and paint thinner. I didn't add it into the right here because I'm gonna bring bring it into my next slide here. But a paint thinner is good. There's walnut oil and then there's um, liquid that you can use for paint thinners. Um, this allows you to get nice um, nice thin brush strokes. Or in this case, if you're doing your underpainting. So uh, here are some stages in um, the oil painting um, that are essential to creating more fine art or more realism than especially, and this is kind of where I am. So um, here's my example of one of my paintings. Um, I'm going to explain to you kind of the stages here. So um, if you look on the bottom, the little um, italicized, uh, there's an underpainting. And on the left uh, picture here, right, oh, you can't see it. Um, on the left here, um, that's the underpainting. It is um, Gamsol, which is a paint thinner mixed with burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And um, it's it's almost created like a, a really loose wash and you wash it over and then you, um, what this does, it, it creates the values that will be potentially used, um, that will reflect the actual image that you are painting. So what I mean by this is that um, if you look at the painting, uh, look at the bird right now, you'll see that it's a little darker on the on the one, on the right side, and then when you look by the beak, it's a little lighter. Well, that's because in the painting that that area, the beak area, is actually a little bit more lighter. So we're gonna kind of rub that out to make sure that um, we make that the painting will look um, the way it should at the end. And um, so after that's done, we're gonna, uh, and when that's dry, obviously, because <laughs> the painting takes around, you know, it depends, but um, the underpainting will take around three or four days to dry. And then once that's dry, we're gonna tackle our first layer. And our first layer is <laughs> funny, because I usually call it the ugly stage, and that's very mean. But um, what I mean by this is that it's um, pretty much um, applying your, uh, your colors, your, your more generalized colors. And it's not going to look pretty. And we're not going to, uh, you know, uh, create a painting within the first couple brush strokes. It's going to be very, 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 um, very general and very blocky. 
And this is just establishing the colors underneath or the uh, generalized colors around the subject matter. And then next we're going to tackle the detail. And then the detail is applying the layers and pun layers to um, create the visual effects of um, the bird or the subject matter that you're painting. And we will apply more colors and we'll apply more shadows and highlights to create the illusion of you know feathers and of the wings and of whatever you're painting. And by the time you add more and more layers, then you'll see more and more results and that'll get you further to your end result. So, you know, we finally tackled our first painting or we tackled many, many paintings. Where do we start? And how do we, you know, I made all this artwork, what do I do with it? So um, in this course, especially here, we're kind of learning some of those things and I'll just address some of the things that worked for me or have I have been experimenting with. So here, um, sharing on your social medias is a huge thing. Um, so, um, creating a business account on Instagram or creating a fan page on Facebook allows you to share on a broader scale. It allows you to share um, your content at a at a way bigger scale. And um, it is a little costly, but you can also share through hashtags and share through many other things, but it's always important to show your work, show your work and show what you're creating because people will never know unless you show it to them. Creating a website is important too for um, uh, art curators or art um, uh, collectors if they wanna see your work and uh, show your works um, in like a gallery or for trade shows, it's very important. Um, some, some people don't have social, social media, some people don't think that it's a professional way to show your artwork. And um, that's why they reflect back on the websites because the website is seen as more of a professional um, gallery, uh, online gallery for your work. Um, exhibiting at trade shows. Um, this is really good for one-on-one -on -one communication with um, uh, people. You can network with people instantly and you can network with um, people locally that you would have never ever anticipated to meet or to um, come across. And this allows them to see your work in person. And that's a very important thing um, they get, they, people find a more appreciation for, um, work when it's either completed or in the, in the process of being completed. Um, I usually work at my trade shows, um, work on a painting while I'm at them. And it, it really shows my painterly aspects of my, uh, practice. Now, exhibit at local galleries. This is something I am working towards too, but it's very important to um, it's very important to um, get your work out there and to show your final products in a professional gallery setting. Um, this makes you um, not only does it help you with your practice, but it also helps makes you look to be more of a professional artist and allows you to. Um, not only just paint for the sake of painting, but paint for your audience and paint for other people outside of your basement. Um, this is very, um, yeah. So this is my final slide. Um, this is something that um, I believe is very important for creating work. Um, it's always important to have an art mindset and to always um, think of the long-term um, exposure of your work. Um, every single painting that you create is just stepping stones towards something bigger. And making art is essentially a marathon and not short little sprints. We should create um, artwork for the sake of trading, not uh, the sake of um, working for other people, appreciation of, of us. It should be a personal, uh, learning, personal experimenting with um, your medium. And um, I find that I've felt the sprints quite a bit and it's, it, it's really downgrading. Um, 
I think that a lot of people don't continue with oil painting because they don't see the long-term um, long uh, goal at the end, that you're an artist and you're made to paint. And especially with video too, I think this involves video as well. Creating your first short film will not be your final outcome, that there's no end goal for that. It's just you create something and it's going to, you're going to create more you're, um There's always going to be more, more work because that's just who we are as people. And I think that having this mindset is very important for your creative, um, creative um, passion, I would say. So um, this is my, <laughs> this is my conclusion. Um, I really appreciate everyone who watched. Um, this has been uh, my little insight into my little uh, world. And I really appreciate everyone for coming out to um, watching this. Um, and um, I look forward to everyone else watching my next videos in the future. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, I look forward to um, talking with you guys in the future. Thank you. Bye.